episode 34 of Michael McCoy's Garden. The 9th of February 1999 with just one week to go until this garden is open to the public. Who ever heard of staking nasturtiums? But they needed it as I was losing them one every few days to the wind. At this stage of their lives, just buns of foliage yet to run, they're very vulnerable to the wind, which rocks them until their stems snap. It is some time before you realise what's happened. They begin to look a bit sick, wilting only a little. And when you rustle around to see what the problem might be, you find that you can pick the whole thing up. No roots whatsoever. They were growing well, but for every plant that began to bulk up, another would die, so that I was going backwards rather than forwards in covering the ground. And I hate bare soil at this time of year. Nicotiana lime green has been going on for months now. It came into flower so early that it had absolutely no context and therefore gave no pleasure, save the triumphant feelings from successfully overwintering it. But the surrounding plants, such as Helenium Morheim Beauty and Cosmos Sulfurius, have grown up around it, now showing it to its best. The hot days, repeatedly, are tiring, but I can never tire of the warm evenings. The Nicotiana releases its viscous perfume, and all is right with the world. There have been other green Nicotianas getting around in punnets that I wouldn't bother to grow. They're stunted little plants of little grace and never create the solid block of lime green that the taller, open pollinated form does. They're a good example of the worst of the nursery industry. For instance, they are favoured over the taller, better plant because they're unstable hybrids so that if they produce any seed, it will not come true to type, forcing you to rebuy them each year. Secondly, their stunted growth makes it easier to fit the seedlings into the shallow shelving in seedling delivery trucks. I'm still sufficiently naive and idealistic to get upset and indignant over that sort of thing. I wish I had more of the similarly coloured but much smaller flowering Nicotiana Langsdorfii. It seems to have enjoyed the winter rather less than its cousin has, and there's only one plant this year. I first noticed this plant at Tintenhull when Penelope Hobhouse was still gardening there. It was growing beside a smallish agapanthus, and I was ever so impressed by the fact that the stamens of the Nicotiana exactly matched the blue of the agapanthus. I'm not so easily impressed by that sort of subtlety these days. As it has lost on most visitors, and you virtually need to be lying down under the pendulous flowers to notice the stamen colour, I'd rather go for a combination a little more obvious myself. Maybe I've gardened for others for too long. Nicotiana sylvestris is taller than either of those above, with long, curving tubular flowers exploding at the start of the flowering from a single point atop a stem of up to 1.8 metres. It's supposed to be heavily scented in the evenings, though I've never yet achieved any scent. Apparently it needs very warm evenings of up to 25 degrees Celsius to really pump it out. Such nights are few and far between in these parts. The tall white Nicotiana alata is, I'm told by those in warmer climates, more reliable for scent and the individual flower is more showy, though its form is less distinctive. The seed is well nigh impossible to get, but I found some plants at a tube stock nursery. Heaven knows who they generally sell them to, for you never see them for sale in retail nurseries. The entire garden is reaching its peak of volume. An overwhelming bulk of plant matter has erupted from this brown earth. It's been boiling up for months, like those instant volcanic islands, and now threatens to engulf and swallow me. I'm happily, drunkenly, drowning in it. It was such a huge moment. Uh, but it's really interesting to think back on those, um, uh, uh, that, that whole idea of, of the values of nurseries and what they need to consider when they're selecting plants and how different that is from the values you have as a gardener yourself. And so many plants uh, you see in nurseries are chosen for things that once they're in your garden, are irrelevant. For instance, how good and floriferous they are, they look in a pot. And these days, in order for stuff to sell well in nurseries, they've got to be in full bloom in the pot, looking fantastic. And that's not necessarily indicative of how they're going to perform in your garden. So it's really worth trialing things. And, 
and a big shout out to those nurseries um, that, that grow perennials particularly that will often look really pretty lame in pots but look amazing when they're in the ground. And I was very heavily dependent on that kind of plant for this big opening, which is now only one week away. So join me tomorrow when I share how I was feeling on the morning of my opening. See you then.